Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I'm here with my girl Tiger Lily, which is actually a Brazilian rainbow, but she's head for hypo. Now she's an animal ambassador here at the Reptarium and it's not quite big enough to breed, but today is an exciting day because today starts the breeding season for some of my boas. And that means my rainbow boas, sand boas, and viper boas start getting bred today and it's gonna be exciting. Let's hope we get some baby boas here coming up later this summer. So what do you say we head down to BHB in the dungeon and start getting these little monkeys together? So obviously it's super exciting to be able to finally start breeding the rainbow boas this year. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I typically will group these into say two females, sometimes even three females in a cage, and then a male. That's just the way I've always bred Brazilian rainbow boas, which you have to remember is number one, sometimes a communal group will actually encourage breeding as well as encourage follicle growth. So if one female is growing follicles and she's in with other females, it seeds the other females to grow follicles. And and uh, it's just the way I've done it. You know, people can breed them one-on-one. -on -one. You can do all kinds of different ways, but this is what we're gonna do. So we have two groups of Brazilian rainbow boas that are gonna be separate from one another. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tag one, two, three, and then I'll show you, I'm actually gonna mark on the animals so that way when I combine them, I can tell how to separate them back into their cages, right? So uh, first thing I do is just inventory things, tag them, and then, uh, then we'll come back and we'll actually mark the actual animal with the paint marker. Literally what I'm gonna do is just take a silver paint marker and just put number two on all the way down because this is the number two female. And that way I can always get her back into her own cage when I separate them out because I really don't want to mix them up. I always want to keep the records of number one, number two, number three, and so on like that. So I just literally go in and just mark these girls. We've noticed that silver and gold, so the metallic colors, tend to actually stick better than the other colors. So that's something to always keep in mind. For whatever reason, white and stuff like that, they'll actually wipe off and so on like that. Whereas the silver actually holds pretty good and it doesn't hurt the animal at all. There's nothing that's gonna concern the animal. And I'll just mark those and then ultimately what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna put one, two, and three together into one group for starters. And then I'll probably put uh, another group of four and five together and then maybe even switch them up a little bit here and there. And then I'm actually gonna breed them to this male here, which is super, super pretty. This of course is a hypo Brazilian rainbow, right? here so again this is a recessive mutation so I'll go ahead and just kind of seed him in here again these guys are just gonna start warming up start breeding we we'll typically see breeding pretty quickly after we start in introducing them start increasing the food a little bit like we always do with all of our snakes and then hopefully here within the next maybe three months we'll start to see some ovulations and then if that all goes well we're looking at you know July August for actual babies and these guys will have anywhere from you know 15 babies all the way up to 30 babies and these are some pretty Big females so I tell you what a girl like this can certainly have mid-20s no problem at all I mean she looks absolutely incredible and what you could tell now that I have number two I have number three and then ultimately I think I'm gonna go ahead and put number one in this group too and I'll switch this up sometimes I'll have two females together sometimes I'll have three females together I just kind of switch things around but now if that male is breeding one two or three I can mark on the actual cage which one's being bred that's why I use the silver marker I've got something important to share with you. That's right, we have brought back Bella Banana shirts. You guys know that we don't typically do this. This is the first time I've ever brought an old design back and it's the last time I'm gonna bring an old design back. It's just by such popular demand, people have been asking me for Bella Bananas. For the next few weeks, you can go to the link in the description and you can get your Bella Banana shirt in different colors, hoodies, mugs, all that type of stuff. Definitely check out the link in the description. Again, these are only gonna last for the next few weeks. You may not know this, but sometimes tortoises climb trees. What are you doing, Matilda? You crazy monkey. So it's really cool. Again, Matilda just pushes her way out of her door whenever she wants to cruise around. So I came in this morning and she's booking around. The good news is she doesn't come out at night. She sleeps all night. But in the morning when the sun comes up and stuff like that, every now and then she wants to go on a little adventure. And sometimes she tries to climb trees. You're so silly monkey. What are you doing, silly girl? You're such a good girl. I love you, girl. 
<laughs> You're crazy. Really busy day here at the Reptarium. I think Lori is trying to kill us. Uh, Jay, what are you doing? So I've got some virtual tours. I've got some birthday parties. I've got some private tours. It's crazy. I see you've got McDonald's. Are you? You got it. What, how much of a break do you have? I have four minutes. To eat four minutes right now. All right. So let's talk for a few minutes first, just because I want to talk to you about how life is and stuff like that. I, I then, really want to eat some McDonald's. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Eat. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Next up is actually the Colombian rainbow boas, and these are again just like the Brazilians. I'll be totally honest with you. Typically, a little bit more predictable when it comes to breeding. I mean, if you bred 10 female Colombians, you're probably going to get eight or nine litters. With Brazilians, if you bred 10, you're probably going to get maybe five or six. And they do have a little bit of a tendency to not have as good of litters when it comes to infertility and stuff like that. So regardless, leucistic, absolutely gorgeous. Got a bunch of hat leucistic females. So I'm going to probably breed this white boy to four females, and then I'm going to breed some hats to other females. I think we have a total of 12 females to breed. So we'll get four with them, and then we'll do four and four with other het males or something combination thereof. So I just have to pick which four females I want to go to the white one because again they're het which means half the babies will come out like him and half the babies will be het. When I'm breeding het to het obviously only 25% of the babies are going to come out leucistic and 75% of them are going to be possible het for leucistic so obviously the four I want to pick for this guy is going to be the biggest and most robust females that hopefully will have the largest litters and I've had litters in the 20s for Colombians as well typically not as big a litters as Brazilians can have but still can have some pretty massive litters. So again, just kind of organizing and again, when you're starting to breed snakes, I'm telling you what, organization in the beginning is going to save you so many hours down the road. If you're putting a male over here and then over there and then over here, it's going to cause you a lot. So it's all about kind of rearranging the females to make the most sense so that it's simple to get males in because the simpler it is, the more successful you're going to be. Keep in mind when you're marking the animals with the silver, if it's in shed, it's gonna shed that off, right? Because this is just going on that epidural shed layer. So uh, if it's in shed, I typically don't put it in a group and I'll wait till it sheds out. As soon as it sheds out, then I mark it. Another thing when you keep them in groups, we'll only keep them that way for maybe two or three days, but that's something to keep an eye on because if one of them sheds, now you have to do a little bit of deductive reasoning where that animal goes because you don't wanna confuse them. So uh, again, once I get all these Columbians marked, I'll start putting all the males and females together and the process has begun. Next up are actually Samboas. And I really do things similar as I do on the rough scale Samboas when it comes to the Jani, which are the smooth scale Samboas, is I'll literally just take a handful of females and put them together, two or three females, and I run actually a sunset male through them. I do have one sunset female here, and you can just see how beautiful she is. You know, she's got that orange still in her. You can still see a little bit of the banding towards the tail and stuff like that. So I'm certainly going to want to get her bred as well. So we'll probably do like three in one group, two in another group, and we'll cycle that male sunset through this. And hopefully with any luck we'll produce some babies. It's been like two years since we've had babies in the Sambo, so hopefully this year will be the year. Hey Lori. What? I know that you schedule things really crazy, but you didn't even give Jay like five minutes off today. He's just busy, like he literally had to eat his his breakfast as he was starting a virtual tour. Yeah, that's what I do. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. So 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 does Jay get any time off at all? No. No? How about how do you get any time off? No. <laughs> do do I get any time off? No. Why? Because we have stuff to do. We have stuff to do, so are okay. What where am I putting it? So, what, what like you can't do this? Help me. Alright. That's so, upside down. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> Oops. Come on. Okay. Yeah, I have this tactic. If if I don't do the job well, she won't she won't make me do it. So. You can handle this. Uh, where does it go, Lori? I can't figure I can't figure it out. Okay. Nice try. All right. Oh, she's a tyrant. 
Things work a little bit differently when it comes to like the rough scales and Kenyan Sambos. We actually have enough males and females where we go one on one with these guys. So this is a little male rough scale Sambo right here. And then down here we've got some of our Kenyan Sambos here. Where you at little monkey? And again, the males are actually relatively small. This just is a, actually a, a hat for snow right there. And so we'll just put one male per female and we'll cycle them through pretty much every day switching to a new male and new female. Again, live bears just like the rainbow boas. And typically the same time of gestation period as well. So with the rough scales and stuff like that we don't even cool them down at all all we do is actually increase the food with the females when we want to start breeding them and that typically sends them into a follicle growth ovulation and then ultimately babies a lot of sand boas so now i'm pretty excited that the season has started when it comes to boas the last group of boas i have to work on are the viper boas now interestingly enough it's kind of difficult to actually sex viper boas and i love these guys i mean they're a little indonesian boa that typically has quite a little attitude this one's got all kinds of coconut bedding all over its head but you can't really avert them and you really they're, the spurs are super small, so I have a hard time actually seeing them. So there's a chance I'm going to get bit here, but what I'm going to do is actually probe. And what it is, is this is the vent right here. This is what they call the anal vent. The sex organs are down here in the base of the tail. This would be what they would call a hemipene pocket. Now, if this goes and probes deeper past maybe seven or eight subcaudal scales, and that's what these scales are called, that's actually a male because it has a hemipene pocket. Now, a female won't have a hemipene pocket, so she'll only probe maybe two or three subcaudal scales at the moment most. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we do this. And most likely I'm going to get a nip because he's probably not going to like it all that much. But let's go ahead and do this. And real gently, I just want to go right in this side. And you can see right here, see how far that probed? That probe went all the way down to here, right down to here. That tells me it's a male. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this one a male. And I just have to go through the group just to make sure because this is the first year I'm actually breeding these guys. And I want to make sure that my sexes are right on them. All right. But we'll just kind of go through all of them like this. Typically the males are smaller they're sexually dimorphic but some of these males tend to be pretty large right now so i just want to make sure that i have the right sex on these guys again i'm just going to find that hemp that pocket I'm going to probe in really gently super deep that's another boy right there so i'm going to mark him ow ow got a little bite on him doesn't he Woo! come on little monkey got a little heart, sharp teeth there's no doubt about that i understand <laughs> I don't know that I want someone probing my nether regions either. So listen, I can totally understand where he's coming from, but I think that that is the only, it looks like we have two other males potentially. So we're gonna go ahead and probe these guys out and just see what happens. Yep, another boy right here. Again, just marking the males on them, just so I, I don't need to necessarily mark the females because I'm gonna be switching these guys out almost every day. So that's another male, looks like we've got three males and maybe a fourth male here which is really good because with this group the more males i have the better actually i'd really like to be able to rotate males through pretty heavy let me see here yep another boy right there see that subcaudal scales right there how far deep it went in that means it's a boy too and there's some really pretty ones in here too and then i'll show you a female just so that you have reference to what they look like as far as probing goes we'll go ahead and show you a female just so you have a pretty good idea of what they look like so you can see females are typically much larger. This one's a very beautiful one too. Really, really pretty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. I'll get this in the same pocket. And you can see this one only probes about that far. So again, female right there. So looks like we're in pretty good shape. We have four males and I think we have six females. So that should be pretty good. We'll just kind of keep swapping them through, switching them out every day or two. And uh, hopefully within the next few months, we'll start to see some ovulations and get some baby viper boas. There it is. Boa season is on its way. A lot of cool stuff is starting to happen. Again, I always talk about the winters are a little bit more boring, uh, especially without us being able to travel this year. So uh, you guys made it through it. It's about to really heat up here. So hang in there with me and I appreciate you so much. If you enjoyed this video and you do want to see a bunch of eggs here's a playlist of snake eggs you can watch all day long if you don't mind right up here you can actually subscribe to my podcast channel talk about all kinds of stuff on that channel on this side 30,000 subscribers away from 3 million hit that subscription button turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you tomorrow